trauma was pretty standard back in the day. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that ruined childhoods in the 80s. I'm Kat Cressida, a WatchMojo addict who, not to age myself too much, did wear the random cut-off sweatshirt and braided headband as a teen, and who now gets to voice plenty of video games and animation, which does keep me in touch with my childhood. So WatchMojo tapped me to take you through this, like, totally awesome countdown. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be taking a look at the movies that may have scared the leg warmers off of you if you were a kid back in the 80s. Number 10. Stand By Me Come on, man! Stop it! You're hurting him! Bastard! Let go, man! Stop it, man! Get, cut it out! Kid. There were a lot of coming-of-age movies in the 80s, with Stand By Me taking the crown for the most deceptively scary. The plot centers on Gordy Lachance and a group of his friends venturing into the woods to see a dead body. Along the way, they're chased by a dog supposedly trained to bite where it hurts, nearly run over by a train, and threatened at knife point by the town bully, played by a young Kiefer Sutherland, no less. But perhaps Stand By Me's most frightening scene is Gordy's sad epilogue, because nothing is more terrifying than growing up. Number 9. Return to Oz It's doubtful that many people were longing for a sequel to The Wizard of Oz. The first film did a pretty good job of wrapping everything up. However, the first thing that we learned from Return from Oz is that Dorothy did not live happily ever after. Upon her return to Kansas, Dorothy was in fact put away in a psychiatric hospital and subjected to electroshock therapy. Ready? Yes, Doctor. Luckily, she escapes and ends up back in Oz. Only this time, just like Kansas, it's a lot darker. Terrifying wheelers with rollerblades for feet hunt her down on behalf of Princess Mombi, a witch who collects heads in the same way that some people collect shoes. Number 8. Gremlins on paper, Gremlins seem like just another fun kids' film, what with the cute, mischievous puppets and its Christmas setting. However, Gremlins was a lot darker than anyone was expecting. First, if you weren't already completely grossed out by the bloody and inventive ways that Gremlins are dispatched, there's the fact that the little monsters launch a disabled elderly woman through a second-floor window, among many other violent scenes. No doubt about it, Gremlins is not your average Christmas movie. A fact it proves with Kate's story about her father dressing up like Santa and dying in a chimney. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh yeah. Firemen came and broke through the chimney top, and me and Mom were expecting them to pull out a dead cat or a bird, and instead they pulled out my father. Number 7. The Dark Crystal when you watch a movie with puppets made by none other than Jim the Muppets Henson, you obviously have certain expectations. Expectations that the Dark Crystal shatters into a million pieces. Instead of bright colors and cheeky anthropomorphic animals who sing and joke at every opportunity, the Dark Crystal features monsters like Skeksis, a mysterious and frightening tone, and a dense backstory. Heck, even Jen and Kira's cute pet, Fizzgig, had a tendency to scream like a demonic hell beast. <laughs> the world of the Dark Crystal is a fantasy land that most children would choose not to visit. Number 6. Labyrinth Oh, I wish I did know what to say to make the goblins take you away. I wish the goblins would come and take you away right now! That's not hard, is it? Anyone who grew up with siblings knows it's not unusual to wish they'd be taken away by goblins sometimes. But when Jennifer Connelly's Sarah summons the Goblin King to dispatch her baby brother, he actually turns up. Oh, and he's David Bowie. So that was cool. Bowie's Goblin King tells Sarah that she must traverse a giant labyrinth within 13 hours, or her brother will become a goblin himself. There's also the fact that Sarah's companion is a salty creature called Hoggle, who gasses fairies for fun. Labyrinth's frightening and sometimes creepily sexual imagery will stay with you for years. Trust us, once you've seen David Bowie's iconic bulge, you'll never be able to unsee it. Jump, magic, jump. Jump, magic, jump. Jump, magic, jump. 
Number 5. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It's not for sale, Francis. My father says everything's negotiable, Pee Wee. Back in the 80s, Paul Rubin's comedic alter ego Pee Wee Herman was seen as being pretty wholesome. So it came as something of a surprise to those watching Pee Wee's first feature film just how damn scary it was. Away from his cartoonish set, Pee Wee Herman embarks on a surreal journey that would fit right into something made by David Lynch. <laughs> After his bike is stolen, Pee Wee takes off on a journey that ends up featuring biker gangs, escaped convicts, terrifying dreams about clown surgeons, <laughs> and of course, Large Marge. On this very night, ten years ago, along the same stretch of road, in a dense fog, just like this, I saw the worst accident I ever seen. Number four, Ghostbusters. Although Ghostbusters 2 also deserves a mention, specifically for the scene where Janosch tries to steal Dana's baby while in disguise as a demonic Mary Poppins, the first movie will always be the best. With its funky Ray Parker Jr. theme tune, fun costumes, and witty one-liners, it's easy to forget many of the flick's darker moments. Get ready. Ready? Get her! Ah! For example, the terrifying jump scare with the ghost in the library, as well as the scene where Dan Aykroyd appears to be sexually assaulted by an invisible pervert. However, the most childhood-destroying moment might just be the finale, in which the Ghostbusters are asked to choose their doom. You will fear Zool and Marshmallows forever after. It can't be! What is it? It can't be! What did you do, Ray? Oh, shit! Number three, Child's Play. Although Child's Play isn't specifically for children, its subject matter, a small boy forced into a battle of wits against his magic doll, is obviously marketed towards kids. Due to this, many an 80s child was exposed to Chucky at a young age. And if you were anything like us when we were younger, this film definitely gave you nightmares that a dead serial killer soul just might be hiding in your Stretch Armstrong just waiting to frame you for murder and steal your body. And I'm pretty sure the sight of Chucky slowly getting roasted alive left a few mental scars as well. <laughs> Number 2. All Dogs Go to Heaven On the surface, this film follows a dog named Charlie B. Barkin, who was sent back from heaven with a magical watch that can rewind time. So far, so Disney. But All Dogs Go to Heaven earns its place on this list thanks to its adult themes of drinking, smoking, gambling, and murder. Eschewing the family-friendly tone of most other animated flicks, the opening scene involves the main character escaping from the pound, getting blind drunk, and then being murdered. Kill it, shut up, shut up, shut up! Can't keep a good dog down! And if you thought that was the end of the movie's edginess, let's not forget that nightmare sequence where Charlie literally goes to hell. Before we reveal our number one entry, here are a few honorable mentions. In the old town tonight. <laughs> Number one, the never ending story. Although this classic seems like any other fantasy adventure for children, it's important to remember that, besides Gmork, who's really more of a scary henchman, there isn't really a big bad villain in the film. <laughs> 
Instead, Atreyu actually tackles the abstract concepts of entropy, depression, and nihilism, represented by a dark force that is ravaging Fantasia called the Nothing. If this sounds a bit heavy for children, that's because it is. And to this day, 80s kids are still haunted by Atreyu's haunting screams of Artex as he watches his horse sink into the swamps of sadness. Stupid horse! You gotta move! I'm Kat Cressida, and if you're all down for a little daily dose of video game, voiceover, or Disney trivia fun, be sure to check me out at Kat Cressida on Instagram and Twitter. And more importantly, for your daily fix of totally awesome top 10 lists published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.